Hello everyone, I'm TC Lee and welcome back to the Tank Club. In this video, we're going to be looking at my top 5 builds in Raven Dawn. This will include my best tank build, but also my favourite damage and healing builds as well, with some levelling setups to help you along the way. So let's get started off. Please let me know in the comments below what build you're playing in Raven Dawn. So first of all, let's look at some general information. One thing you may not be aware of is how to get more skill points and attributes. Some of these builds won't work properly until level 25 or more, due to you needing more skills, more passives and more skill points. To obtain more skill points, you can switch your archetype and level them up. At level 10, you gain one additional skill point for each inactive archetype. So all five of your inactive archetypes could be worth five skill points. This will give you an additional skill point every 10 levels. You can also gain more attributes by making sure your inactive archetypes are level 11, and this again increases every 10 levels. So making your character stronger could include simply leveling up your unused archetypes. In these builds, I'm using plate armor with vitality. During the early stages, the survival benefits of plate armor and vitality is really useful. Doing this also means I can switch seamlessly between builds, whether it's a tank or a damage dealer. At a later point, I may use different armor on some of the damage builds especially, such as using cloth. Other gear on these builds will include rings, amulets and trinkets, all of which are bought from the ranger's company vendor, or obtained via doing quests. Some of these builds are highly dependent on raven cards, and without them, you may not get the same results. So onto my first build, and this is the Paladin Tank Build. This build is a PvE group-based tank build which aims to take aggro of enemies, crowd control, debuff and survive. You'll need to choose Warfare, Protection and Holy to gain this class. The weapons used are the one-handed sword with a tower shield. The sword ability allows you to gain a damage shield and using a tower shield is the more defensive option compared with the buckler shield. With your attributes, you should split them between Might and Wisdom. Doing so gives you damage but also improves your healing which is vital for self-sustain as a tank. If you have a healer, you could switch your points from Mighty into Vitality, but you will do considerably less damage. When we look at the skills on this build, a big focal point of your damage comes from Warfare with Brutal Strike, Guillotine, Feasting Strike, and then later on you'll also use Bladestorm and Fissure. Really useful passive is Bloodseeker for the heal. It gives you a heal from all basic attacks and that doesn't matter what weapon or anything that you're using. On the healing side of things, we are using Flash Heal, Dawn's Light, Mend, Devotion, and Circle of Light. Those will give you that additional utility for your own self-healing, as well as some heals for your group. When we look on the protection side of things, we don't really use Bash, because we prefer to use Brutal Strike, because that comes with healing. But then we've got Spirit's Resolve, which gives you a really big heal for 200% healing power. We've got Spirit's Shield, which is a great defensive skill. Blessed Earth, which is really good for both yourself and your group. Provoke, which is your taunt skill, which also applies a debuff with your card. And then Unbreakable. There are some other utilities here with Banner of Protection and Shield Throw, which is also very useful when used alongside Minotaur Warden for the Shield Throw card. Your passives on here are really useful as well. Divine Purpose is a really good passive for increasing your healing received, while Guardian and Giant's Blood are also very useful. You don't have to use these skills in this particular order. You can select them in a different order, whichever suits you best. Things like Shield Throw, for example, is one of my, la my last picks. But if you've got the card that will do the taunt and you need an interrupt, then this is obviously useful much sooner. It very much depends on how you're setting things up. When going into combat, your main focus is to obviously attack the enemy and then you want to be hitting your defensive cooldowns of Spirit Shield. When you're surrounded by enemies, you want to hit that Blessed Earth. Keep your health up by casting Spirit's Resolve. Maintain your taunt with Provoke. Obviously, hitting Guillotine is going to put some damage on there, which is going to proc some of your perks. And then also, using Feasting Strike is going to heal you as well. Bladestorm is also going to provide a heal, while Fissure will freeze the enemies. And then you'll just rotate through your different Holy Skills. Mend is a good one to maintain for long periods of time, because this will give you a constant tick of healing and then your other skills are more bursty so use those in situations where you need more health if you'd like to see a bigger breakdown of all the skills and gear please check out my website thetankclub.com for more info the second build we have is a scholar healer and with this build you'll be focused mostly into healing and group support by providing buffs and benefits alongside healing 
the archetype selections are holy, spiritual and witchcraft, which make you into the scholar class. For the weapon, you should use the scepter, as this is the healing staff, which also provides a damage shield with its weapon ability. On the attributes, it's best to split them with 80% into intelligence and 20% into wisdom. Survival should be fine if you're using the vitality plate armor we mentioned earlier, at the lower levels especially, but if you find it hard, then try putting some points into vitality, especially if you move on to cloth armor. While leveling, you could focus more into witchcraft and switch your skills when going into group-based content. When we look through this build, we obviously started on the witchcraft side with Arcane Pulse and the Ghost Lamp Hag card. We've got Arcane Torrent alongside Scorn Warlock. Magic Rupture for slowing down the enemies alongside the Mana Storm Jin. Siphon because it's a good skill for draining mana, which is very, very useful for maintaining your sustain. Yornish Frostbearer. We've then got the passive down here, Witchcraft Mastery. And then some of the other skills we're using, we're using Dispel to remove random beneficial effects from the target. We've got Mirror Image, which copies a mimic of certain skills that you do. So the skills that you use are going to be mimicked by this, which means you can double down on some of the healing skills you're using because it will copy them, which is really, really strong. Then we've got the Hell Gazer, which does Mirror Image now deal 6% increased damage. Final Passive Exploitation as well. Now, as I said before, in the other build, you don't have to copy this exact order. It's a general guideline, but there are definitely different ways that you can take different selections depending on what you're after. For your holy skills, we are using Flash Heal with Yornish Druid. We've got Mend and the Brotherhood Mender card. We've got Devotion for a big burst heal and this card here. We're then using Dawn's Light as well, which is going to give an even bigger heal with the Vampire Reaver. Healing Channel and this card, which is going to allow you to cast this skill while moving, but it does slow you down. We've got a big party heal with Circle of Light and Golden Guardian card attached to that because it will apply Mend as well. So it's going to give people Mend as well, which is very, very strong. Generous Influence for a humongous heal alongside Ice Forge Winter Lord. On the passives, we just all these passives are somewhat useful, so it's difficult to choose some because you're just probably not going to be able to get them all. But we've got Sacred Spirit, Prophet, Invigorating Healing and Healing Attunement. On the spiritual side of things, you could also use this for some of your damage with Cyclone. You could use Naturalist Mage if you wanted to. Then we got onto the important skills. There's a lot of utility with Spiritual with Whirlwind. And the strength in Whirlwind comes from the card itself, which is Bat, that will disarm the target and reduce their attack power. We've also got Barrier, so a huge barrier. 240% healing power barrier around a person. It also absorbs additional 25% when we put Well Shell Giant on there. Increases the barrier strength even further. We've got a real nice... Heal tick over here with regenerate. So we've already got this healing tick here with mend, but then we've also got another one with regenerate. This one with the elf druid card is nice, so it costs a bit less. Force push in a desperate situation where enemies are obviously surrounding you and you need to get free. Maybe you're taking lots of damage. Force push is going to push them back. With the chroman card, a 500% barrier to you and two nearby party members. So this could be a very crucial survival tool when it's needed. We've also got party recovery. So another really nice party-based um, skill there, along with the Huckman Doctor, increasing their healing efficiency. Down here we've got Haste, and with the Grey Wolf card, instead of increasing your haste by 50%, it now affects you and your entire party. So this is going to give a group buff again. For your passives, some really nice ones. Obviously more increased healing passives, increase the duration of healing over time. We've got quite a few different healing over time skills, so that's really valuable. And Celerity reduces the cooldown of all skills by 10%. A huge passive and you really, really want to get this one. Next, we move on to damage builds and the first is the Black Guard build. This is a build that I'm having a lot of fun using at the minute. It's a powerful AoE build where the idea is to get as many enemies as possible and burn them down. All while tanking their damage and healing yourself. And this build works well for solo or duo situations and it can even be used at quite low level. The archetypes needed are Protection, Spiritual and Wisdom. And the best weapons to use would be a staff to gain the increased damage from the weapon skill. But a light blade could also be used. For your attributes, the best thing to do is to place 80% into intelligence with 20% into wisdom. At the start, I was using plate armor, but cloth would also work really well when you are a bit higher level. When we look through the skills, it all starts off with wizardry, where we take fireball alongside chain wraith haunt. We don't really use this skill, however. We've then got erupt and ember glow trunk. We've got Combustion, which is a very, very strong skill that we're going to use quite often. It does an AoE damage. And then we've got Ember Scale Drake. It applies a Burning Ember stack 
to enemies affected by combustion. So that's really, really good. We've then got Flame Tornado, which is the main skill of this whole build, which will do a ton of damage when we place this tornado on ourselves when surrounded by enemies. And then with that, we want to use the Flame Lord Jin. Additionally to that, later on, you're going to want to put Meteor Strike in there alongside Astor Demon. And then the passives would be Havoc, Flow of Magic, and Amplification. So Amplification increases the damage of your skills by 8% at the cost of 25% more mana or health. So it does mean that it can be difficult to sustain your mana, but you will do an absolute ton of damage. Alongside that, you've got Protection, which is a really vital tool for this entire build. So we don't use Bash, but we do use Spirit's Resolve for 200% heal. And we put Hoggle on there as well. So if we're a lower on health, we're going to get a bigger heal. We've also got Spirit Shield with Frost Gladiator to reflect some damage back at the enemy. One of the crucial parts of this entire build is using Blessed Earth. So we stack on enemies around ourselves and then we drop Blessed Earth. And that is extremely valuable. Combined with Morningstar Judge, which isn't that vital. But if you are with party members, it's going to be helpful. It might seem strange if this is not a tank build to use Provoke, but it's the card that goes with it. The Orc card, Provoked Enemies, increases the attack power of targets by 19%, but it'll decrease their defense power by 36%. So you're going to take more damage, but you're going to make the enemies receive even more damage themselves. So it's a kind of a risky thing to do, but it will make you be able to burn enemies down much faster. We've also got Unbreakable, which is a good alternative to use if you are still if you've still got enemies alive towards the end of a fight and you need a bit of an extra shield so you throw that on and then alongside skeleton pikeman on your passive divine purpose is a vital component of this but you've also got guardian and giant's blood which are both super useful on the spiritual side of things we've got some very integral skills here as well so this is going to be our main skill cyclone this is going to be your main cooldown skill when you're not casting anything else so we're not going to be using bash we're not going to be using fireball you're going to be using cyclone with that we've got the naturalist mage card and then we've got regenerate so regenerate is going to give you ticks of healing over time so you'll keep this up hundred percent of the time when you've got the need for a burst heal that's when you use spirits resolve on this card we've got toad targets affected by barrier receive 60 percent increased healing and when we use barrier it's supposed to go on ourselves because if you're not in a group it's going to go on you and that's going to give you a huge barrier we've also got the many eyes trunk card with that if your barrier breaks or expires it will explode and deal damage, which is fantastic. You've then got Air Aura and the Rune Gust Jackal card. So it's doing damage back to the enemy and it giving a shield as well. We then finish off with Windstrike Spirit and Mr. Cat Mushroom and then Haste with the Goblin Tinker. The last two passives include Wind Mastery and Celerity. To make this build work effectively, you obviously want to keep yourself healed up at all times by using regenerate and spirits resolve you try and bring lots of enemies together and then once they are stacked up you need to use spirit shield followed by blessed earth followed by provoke once those three things are active you then want to drop flame tornado on yourself to make the tornado appear on all enemies and hit all enemies and then you drop combustion as well over the top of the enemies by this point the majority of the enemies should die in between that it's a good idea to cast air aura as well and just rotate through these skills as and when you need them. If you need to use barrier, throw that on as well. If you need an extra shield, you throw an unbreakable. And then if you need to do a bit of extra damage to enemies, it's a good idea to put that erupt in there. Next, we have Fighter. And I was originally playing Dark Knight, but wasn't a huge fan of Shadow. So I switched that into Archery, which I find to be much more useful and versatile, at least up towards level 40. This build combines melee damage, range damage, AoE damage, survival, and a range of buffs and debuffs to give you a nice well-rounded build that can be used in many varying situations. The archetypes used to create a fighter are archery, protection and warfare. I use a two-handed axe for my weapon as it gives additional AoE damage with the weapon skill, but a bow would be a decent alternative as well. For the stats, you should invest 80% into might and 20 into dex. However, those 20 into dex aren't extremely useful until over level 30, so put them either fully into might or put that 20% into vitality if you're struggling to survive. We start off with archery purely because it's easier if you play with archery to begin with. Because you can attack enemies and run away. You won't have to take any damage. So while you're still low level, you want to put your points into wind arrow. And this card here, we've then got viper arrow, which does damage over time to the enemy, which is nice. And then the giant bee to increase the damage of each tick. Next, we've got snaring shot. 
It's going to slow the enemy down alongside Spear Hog. It also buffs up your previous skill, Viper Arrow, because it's going to buff that up and make it do more damage for the remaining duration. We've got Dawn Arrow. It's going to cause blinded and confused enemies for 2.5 seconds. We're also going to use Sand Watcher Jackal, which is going to buff our next eight basic attacks. Later on, you're going to use Rain of Arrows. This is a really strong AoE damage skill. You shoot a Rain of Arrows into a medium area for two seconds. It's going to drop down, going to do a ton of damage. Then we're going to use this card as well to add a bit more damage in there as well. 24% weapon power from a burn effect. Final skill is the Dragon's Arrow alongside the Draconic Crusader. On the passives, I've gone with Careful Aim, Mark for Death and Blitz. Once you've took a few skills in archery, you will want to do some into warfare. This is going to help with your survival by having brutal strike. So this is so wind arrow is going to be a really good range-based basic attack. And in melee range, brutal strike is going to be good as well because it's going to also give a heal. So that's a nice option for close range. You've got guillotine and you've got feasting strike as well, which is going to give you some healing. Fisher is just too good to pass up because it will stun enemies and stop them from doing anything. And you can also apply a slow. Up here, we've got Bull Rush to charge at the enemies alongside the Boar Run card, which is going to decrease their defensive power. Fierce Leap is another good option to jump to the location, slamming down into a medium area. It's going to stun enemies as well. Combine that with the Shark Harpooner card. On the passives, we've got Bloodseeker to heal with basic attacks and also Bloodbath, which is an excellent passive as well. And then throwing in a bit of concentrated impact to make up even more. If you wanted to add any more skills in here, Earthquake would be another good option, as would Bladestorm. You could kind of switch things around depending on the situation you're going into. If you need more AoE, you could pop those in there as well. If not, you could take things like Concussive Shot. Precision Shots can be another good skill. So there's lots of different options, but this is the setup that I'm currently using. Last but not least, we have a Shadow Spell Build, which a few of my friends have been using and told me it is really, really overpowered. I plan on giving it a proper try this weekend, but it's a very high DPS build, which is best suited to a group as it's a bit of a glass cannon and survival can be challenging on your own. To make this class, you need shadow, witchcraft and wizardry. And this build uses staves because of the weapon skill, which buffs up damage. The best armor would be cloth, but plate can be used if you are low level. And for your attributes, you want to split them with 80% intelligence and 20% into dex. But as mentioned already, using some vitality points rather than decks can be good early on. When we look through the skills, Witchcraft is where it all starts. Everything goes into Witchcraft at the very start with Arcane Pulse and Hoghound Shaman. Arcane Torrent with Doom Gazer. We've then got Magic Rupture and the Mana Storm Jin. Siphon drains mana alongside Yornish Frostbearer and the Mirror Image with the Hellgazer card. Exploitation. Witchcraft Mastery and Arcane Corruption are the passives there. And this is a good way to start out the build as well because everything here is just, you'll get these within the first few levels and everything is plowed into that section. After that, you go into Wizardry and you focus everything into Wizardry now. So we've already got a lot of damage there. This is another big damage skill line. And we've got Fireball with Goblin Wizard. You probably won't use that. You've got Erupt and Emmerglow Trunk. Combustion with Goblin Bomber. Flame Tornado with Goblin Pyro. This is obviously, we've mentioned already, a huge damage skill that you place down where all the enemies are stood and it will hit them all. And then this is a big damage AoE. You've also got some Pyro Blast in there and Draconic Pyromancer and Meteor Strike with Astor Demon. Again, really useful passives here with Havoc, Flow of Magic and Amplification. Once you've finished out the Wizardry section, then you finally put points into Shadow and you just go down the side here. The main reason for using Shadow is for some utility and passives. You've got Quick Slash, which is not a skill you're really going to use, but you are going to use Shadow Bind. So you throw a Shadow Net and snare the target. You also use Cave Spider with that, which adds an additional silence. You've got Shadow Kick to interrupt enemies and also slow them down. Combine that with the Scorn Initiate card to increase your critical chance. You've then got Elusive to dodge incoming attacks and Pirate Swashbuckler, and this is used to avoid damage attacks on your character. Sinister Spot generates Aether, and then you put the Scorn Acolyte on there as well. On the passives, Shadow Proficiency, Killer Instinct for adding Execute damage there with 10% damage to targets under 50% health, and then Cheap Shot. So this is a really, really super high damage build, but you will struggle to stay alive. Now, during the early phases, you might need to customize your build slightly differently. As you can see on the screen, now these are a few sort of beginner builds that you can use 
to level up, to get to yourself to level 20, to level 25, and then start branching out to start playing with the builds that we've mentioned in this video. If you've got any questions about anything relating to Raven Dawn, you can post in the comments below or message me on the Tank Club Discord. For a full breakdown of all this information, written builds, guides, all of the Raven cards, all of the details, it's all over on my website, thetankclub.com. Thank you very much for all the support, all the views, the shares, the comments. Very much appreciate everyone interacting with my content. I really appreciate the support from the YouTube members and patrons. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.